Hello guys, once again, happy new year and God bless you all. I hope Tinubu is not going to call for Dr. Robert Abati. Guys, I want to show you a video. We had Dr. Robert Abati on New Year Day. Lambast, humiliate, disgrace, Tinubu. Guys, I want to assure you, I've never seen Dr. Robert Abati on the, on the on, you know, you have never seen this part of him. While watching this video, I was like, wow, wow, wow. I thought it was only Rofa was saying that was more fierce. Guys, the boldness that Dr. R Ruben Bati used to, you know, malign, humiliate, and disgrace Pablo Escobar before Nigerians. Guys, it is unbelievable. Before you watch this video, please make sure you like it now. So that Facebook and YouTube can recommend it. And please make sure you share this video. This video is a must watch. Kindly watch it to the end. Thank you. But I feel they missed some critical points. I also hit the nail on some critical points. And only time will tell if this resonates with a lot of people. All right. Well, what time will tell that is very clear as so of this morning is that a speech uh, delivered this morning by the president is dated. It is too obvious that that speech was recorded before the president came to Lagos because the speech is not contemporaneous enough. And that, I think, is in itself, you know, uh, a scandal. It shows gross indolence on the part of those people who manage the president. And I speak as a person who had gone through this process before. Now, you could see from that uh, delivery, that since the uh, speech was recorded in Abuja, I imagine, that there have been developments in the country. A major development will be the killings on the plateau. That was conspicuously absent in that speech. I had said, well, the president maybe did not need to go. They are having sent a very powerful delegation. But today, speak to Nigerians on New Year Day and not reflect his uh, awareness and understanding of the killings on the plateau. And considering the fact that only yesterday, five more persons were murdered in Boko's local government area, just shows and confirms how dated that speech is. And I put it down to the indolence of his managers. Because wherever the president is, there is enough facility to update speeches to chain recordings. It's not as if it's a lengthy presentation. They could have done, they could have updated the speech, do a fresh recording yesterday, and it will have been up to date. The other major omission is that on Saturday, the National Assembly of Nigeria passed the uh, 2024 appropriation bill, although there are many problems with that, as uh, analysts have pointed out. Uh, specifically Dr. Dili Shubawali, saying that that uh, budget is dead on arrival and that the only indications that you could pick out of it as a professional economist is scarcity, uncertainty, and chaos, and that 2024 will be a more difficult year for Nigerians. But the president will have piggybacked on the details of what the uh, Senate did and also address that because that's also something very fresh. But there was no reference to that in that speech. Now, to the details. The president said we voted for him because he promised us renewed hope and that he's working hard at it and he's committed to delivering on that. And he said a number of things that are important to him. Food scarcity, to address food scarcity, to address electricity supply, to address the refineries. Would the refineries work? There's no certainty in that regard. And maybe that's the uncertainty that Dele Shubawali is talking about. Now, he's talking about uh, food supply. What is the guarantee that you can have food supply if there is still insecurity in the country? The president says in that speech, in fact, that secu security in the country has improved. Now, how do you say that to Nigerians just less than a week after people were being killed almost on a daily basis in over 58 communities in Plateau. How does that provide a justification for the claim 
uh, that you make. He said electricity supply. At a time when power generation, power supply, power distribution in Nigeria is uh, in the dark alley of 4,000 megawatts for over 200 million people. So how is that, that improvement in, uh, in uh, power supply? The president also talked about his commitment to attracting foreign investment, FDI. At a time, within the same week, that the National Bureau of Statistics announced to us that capital importation to the country has fallen. And that 27 states of the Federation attracted zero importation of capital. And at a time where we've been told that companies are leaving Nigeria, PNG has left, Jumia may follow, ShopRite is following, other companies like that are leaving Nigeria in droves. Is this contradiction not clear to the president and the drafters of his message on New Year Day? However, he admitted that there is a lot of hardship in the country as a result of foreign exchange crisis and the removal of a forest subsidy. But the economists argue that forest subsidy, in fact, has not been removed. That forest subsidy, in fact, is returning. And that if care is not taken in 2024, uh, forest, message, uh, forest subsidy will return in full force. Now, the president then puts the responsibility on all of us. He said in that piece, that we are joint heirs of the Commonwealth, and we also have a responsibility. Yes, we the people have a responsibility, but what we keep saying is that government cannot keep telling us to make sacrifice, and government is not listening. The conspicuous consumption that was demonstrated by way of the president going to the mosque to go and pray on Friday in Lagos, and he had a convoy that looked like he was going to war. Nobody goes to the mosque to go and wage war. They go there to pray to God, to seek the face of God. I, I, I mean, I've been part of a presidential convoys at home and abroad when I served in government. The convoy that I saw on that Friday just to go to mosque, I think that was unprecedented. And Lagos being the major political base of the president, you ask the question, what is he afraid of? So when it comes to us on New Year Day, and it says we the people must make sacrifice because the country belongs to all of us. Well, our leaders showing that this country belongs to all of us, and they themselves are ready to make the necessary sacrifice. The other point that I find disturbing in the president's New Year message, and I hope they won't do it again, by paying attention to necessary details, is that it is full of, again, promises. Seven months after, it is promises. We will step up our, our plan. We will do this. We hope to do this. We hope to do that. I thought that the standard practice is the, is the imitative uh, declaration of achievements within 100 days. In that whole speech, on New Year Day, seven months after, I think it's uh, you know, quite disturbing that the president could not point to concrete achievements of what his administration has been able to do. The only thing he pointed out, uh, you know, he said neither here nor there, he said we had a successful transition in 2023. Well, he can say that because he's the main beneficiary. I don't think that those who lost out in that process would uh, be saying the same thing. And he says he will fight every obstacle in the way of business uh, commitment. Okay, which obstacles is he going to fight, really? Is it the foreign exchange crisis? Is it the uh, devaluation of the Naira? Is it the lack of uh, confidence and trust on the part of the Nigerian people? Is it the creeping pandemic of empty pockets that Nigerians are groaning under? The fact that they couldn't even have access ahead of the festive period to their money uh, trapped in the banks. With banks in Nigeria now, I've never heard it. That banks will say they don't have money. But in Nigeria, this is the reality. Even the banks don't have money. Even the money that you have kept in the banks, they say they don't have it. So clearly, 2024 appears like it will be a very challenging year. I think we, are, we should leave the uh, destination of promises upon promises. 
Nigerians want concrete action. And one missing element in that uh, New Year message by the president is that there was no concrete policy element. We will do this. We will do this. You know, this is what we have planned to do. Or New Year Day, this is the policy we have adopted to give us a sense of direction. We are still at the same point where we were seven months ago. Promises, renewed hope. Well, hope is good, Christians will say, but concrete action, concrete measures, as Joe Ajiro has argued, as uh, Bishop Matthew Azan Kuka has argued, as uh, Cardinal uh, John Oyanekon, the Catholic Bishop Emeritus of uh, Abuja, has argued, is what the Nigerian people need. And that's what they look forward to in 2024, Mr. President. Well, for a first New Year's speech by Mr. President, unfortunately, it was quite lightweight. And the reason I, I've said that this morning is because um, the mandate on which the president ran and which he's continued as a mantra in his administration <coughs> is that of renewed hope. And more than ever in Nigeria currently, the people need hope. In fact, <coughs> one of the reasons why people still wake up and move around is because there's a glimmer of hope that things will be better and the trust is on the leaders to ensure that things actually are better. And the responsibility of a leader is to deal in hope, is to sell hope, even beyond <coughs> um, you know, having the mantra of renewed hope. And therefore, you'd imagine or expect that the president, who has chanted a number of times the Renewed Hope Initiative, the re Renewed Hope Agenda, would come with a trailer load of hope for the people of Nigeria who are in dire need of it currently. Unfortunately, the about 13 minutes you watched a few minutes ago didn't quite project that hope for Nigerians. In fact, you know what people would have expected, and I, I, maybe I would um, center on that, what would have would have liked to hear this morning on New Year's Day. Nigerians are feeling despondent. The, the president himself acknowledged that inflation is at over 28% currently in the country. There's, you know, uh, the, the removal of, of fuel subsidy has put on a, no, a tough hardship on the people in the last few months. It is his first time to address the nation, the beginning of the year when people have left the old and there's renewed sense of, okay, this is a new year, it's time to get things right, perhaps things will be better. And so we expected to see that or hear that a bit more in his speech. The only thing he did in, in that speech was, yes, acknowledge the fact that people had faced hardship, he had had to make necessary uh, decisions or uh, policy changes that he acknowledged had affected Nigerians. But well, what we wanted to hear from our president was what was going to be good for Nigerians in the year 2024. Aside just touching very lightly, I must say, in light of recent events, and like Dr. Bati had mentioned, perhaps now we understand why this was so, on security matters, which is the first on his eight-point agenda, even the previous president, as criticized as he was with his reaction or perhaps disposition to addressing very difficult times in the nation, acknowledged at different times during his New Year speeches or about the deaths of those or people we had lost the previous year, an acknowledgement of people who didn't make it to the new year. And following the loss of lives in the last few months, one would have thought the president would have, in showing empathy, in showing leadership, have started on that note to acknowledge the fact that things when it comes to security, while still a work in progress, would acknowledge the um, sacrifices of people who had to pay the ultimate price. And I think it was also an opportunity to speak to the military as well, because they've come under fire in the last few weeks, especially with what's happened in Plateau State and in other parts of the nation. So it was an opportunity to, as the commander-in-chief of the armed forces, also speak to that as well. Unfortunately, that didn't come out strongly in his speech. Also economic hardship. Yes, he talked about farming, you know, putting out land. I thought it was an opportunity for him to demonstrate in the last seven months what his administration had achieved in the area of alleviating the poverty or the, or the sufferings of the people. It would have been a great opportunity for him to showcase perhaps what the um, um, Ministry for Humanitarian Affairs had done. At least they said they'd done some conditional cash transfers. In my humble opinion, his handlers ought to have infused that in his speech. When you want to infuse hope or bring hope to people, you demonstrate what has been done to give them a taste of what is to come, that things will get better. Nigerians want to hear that currently. And perhaps it goes again to asking the question, do you understand the sufferings of the people? So yes, it's not a policy um, speech. However, right now, 
What Nigerians want to hear is that things will get better. And more than that is how things will get better. He talked about Nigeria being the you know, destination for investment, right soundbite, but unfortunately, the evidence... We'll say it was low on detail, but the question people also ask is, it's not a policy.